What is up everybody, Cyrus McMuffin here, and I haven't released you know, any videos lately, so I thought I'd show you guys a little bit what I've been doing. So, this is going to be a little bit of project logging on my university's thesis work, which is going to be a brushless DC motor controller and its electric kickback application. Uh, I've been busy with this project for about a uh, month and a half, and this is a little bit of a uh, you know, chronological stuff that I have recorded during that time. Like, for example, this is a little clip from the very beginning when I just had received some of the parts that I needed for the motor controller prototype. And I'm just testing out how the, for example, how the Hall Effect sensor works. And as you can see, when I rotate the uh, process DC motors, you know, rotor in front of the sensor, it detects the polarity of what kind of magnet field is going through it. So it will, um, can remember at the moment exactly if it was, uh, which way it worked, if it was that it turned off when it had north polarity going through it or if it had that it turned, turned off when it had south polarity going on. But, um, well, as you can see, you know, it switches depending on which polarity it has going through. And this was the very first prototype uh, of the motor controller that I had built. And this is basically the Hello World, Hello World application that I had made for it. And this is just, I'm just testing it it can actually, you know, rotate to motor, or, you know, commutate it, as it's referred. Yeah, uh, I made a little small test PCB for the whole effect sensor, so there's a total of three there, and with these three it's possible to have a, a closed loop control of the motor, because when we know at which state the whole effect sensors are, we know which, uh, what uh, MOSFETs to energize and then what the route of the current will be through the motor. And as you can see here, it works pretty well. At least this has been, when I'm making this video, this has been like over a month ago. Uh, this is some of the uh, uh, some of my friends at the printer who, who design and manufacture three D printers. They have hooked me up with a little bit of a body uh, body code that they will three D print three D print pretty much anything that I ask them to. Uh, nice guys over there. And this is a little bit of a the actual test setup. This is just some pretty much jury rigged stuff that is just there to, you know, just to see if it, I can make it work. So as you can see, there's a spring retention on the motor so, it, so that it keeps the uh, gears meshed to each other so that it kind of can't just, you know, bounce out of it. Uh, here's a little bit of a, little of a low power test run. Uh, uh, I could go faster, but do the both of the uh, the wheel gear and the motor gear both being made out of PLA plastic. Uh, the motor gear, uh, being smaller, it just can't take the power. It just starts heating up, and then the plastic starts to soften, and then the gear, uh, the teeth, are stripped out. And of course, you know, this is just our home's driveway, so, you know, not a lot of area. No, just low power, just making, so showing you guys that it actually works. Uh, although, uh, in this video, I'm not actually using the my own controller. This is, I'm using a Hobby King's uh, 60 amp ESC, which is just a general electronic speed controller that is made for their remote control use. And I have a little ser servo tester attached to it so I can actually control how much throttle I want. No, very, no, just a very simple and basic setup to see that everything works. 
And here's a couple of pictures of the actual stripped out and melted motor, t motor gear. Like, yeah, the because of the size that the motor gear is so much smaller, like it has about seven times or more less teeth than the big wheel rim gear. It just starts heating up and the plastic softens a little bit and then, you know, they, the teeth start to give away and they get stripped. But yeah, this is a couple of weeks later I have received my... Uh, the new uh, motor controller PCBs that I designed on uh, Eagle CAD Soft or, or Eagle Design Software by CAD Soft. And basically I'm in this, I'm using the bigger motor now to actually test that it works. And as you can see there's the whole effect sensor board right next to the motor, which I am using to read which readings I have to energize. And then we again jump a, uh, a couple of weeks later, I have uh, designed a new seat for the kick bike. And I'm routing it with my homemade router. And this is a couple of pics of uh, what it looks like now. Like uh, on the background on the floor, you can see the old stuff. Like under the kick bike is the old feed board. And then behind it is the old seat. And as you can see, like the new seat is just so much nicer. Uh, we solved the problem of the, problem of the melting PLA motor teeth by making making them out of nylon, which is just much more durable and high temperature. And I also uh, here's a couple of pictures of burned out traces from the motor controller. Basically, it just couldn't handle the currents that the motor was pulling. So I designed another iteration of the motor controller. This is the logic board for it <laughs> looks simple doesn't it well it's it's not really really complex in the end but looks a little bit of a, like a spaghetti monster so this is the platform that we are building the uh, electric kick bike on it's a Puki r7l and <laughs> as you can see from this generic picture that I got from googling the actual model model and the make of the kick bike it's meant for kids but as you can see in the top right corner it's meant for ages 5 and up so it's good that we are pick kids here but anyways it's not a very large bike but it it was cheap <laughs> that, that that's the main thing and also another big thing or important thing that it has is big wheels those are the, it was only like uh, 130 euros. So, you know, it wasn't very expensive. It has big wheels, so it can actually like work in the real world. Unlike those kick bikes with the very small, you know, hard plastic wheels, like the stunt kick bikes. And before I came to the conclusion of this, of using a kick bike, I went through because because I wanted to do a small scale application for the motor controller, I uh, th there were three options. It was either uh, a bicycle, uh, a skateboard, or a kick bike. And uh, the uh, bicycle and the skateboards were ruled out. So what we were left with was the kick bike. And after looking around at at the different options and the prices and uh, we came to the conclusion that this seems to be the most ideal platform that we can find for cheap like that the price was the big point and you know as you can see it's very simple and compared to the like it's not hard to fit the current seat and the footboard you just basically as you can see in the middle there, there's a small plastic piece that you put your foot on and then you use your other feet to kick kick the bike onwards. But 
is basically there's just two bolts, you re remove them, smack down the CNC routed food board and then basically you switch, you, you take the old uh, axle of the back wheel and you put a little bit longer one with threads on both ends so you can actually rest the seats so you can rest the back of the seat against it and it must be pretty good because it also must uh, house the motor so it has to be it has to stay in the same position with the wheel and in this last clip I want to show you guys uh, at what point the project is right now when I'm making this video here are a couple of the couple of different iterations of the new seats that I have made this was the this was the very first of the new design I mean it well just, <laughs> just look at the video you'll figure out what it is no simple but it's just much sturdier than the old one there like the old one was rickety as hell now uh, this is the second iteration like I was I was a bit annoyed that the first one didn't really work out uh, basically I couldn't mount the motor uh, well enough that it would actually stay in place but it it was a bit too flimsy so I was a bit annoyed that I had to uh, make another one so I decided that I'm gonna add some sass to it so I cut all kinds of holes and things into it to make it look a little bit more cooler and this is the latest one latest seat design for the kick bike and as you can see there's a motor there are there are the gears meshing. Uh, you cannot you cannot see it from this angle. Angle, but there is all still a spring retentioning on the motor, so it keeps stays meshed with the wheel rim gear. And I also made the made this compartment a little bit bigger because it's meant to house all the batteries, which are these Turnigy four cell in series 5000 milli milliamp hours oh, what is a 15.8 volt volts nominal and they are they fit quite snugly in there as you will see in, in just a moment i'm gonna start shoving them in there but like i really that i I want to actually use this project or this kick bike once it's finished to actually commute and uh, when I have done some tests on how much energy it you know consumes when you are just going quite slowly like not yeah, well there there are all the four batteries in the compartment very very tight fit well not like not tight but Let's say snug fit, like they don't have a lot of room to rattle around. And here's a little thumb gas, or no, not gas, accelerator that I have made. Uh, I uh, modeled it in Blender. And then the guys at the printer 3D printed it for me. And as you can see, there's a little potentiometer in there and attached to the stick of the potentiometer is the actual like this i don't know pedal no but i don't know if it's called a pedal because you don't use your use your feet to push it but there's a there's a brake lever and the rear wheel has brake pads and this is a dead man switch so that you need to push that switch for the motor controller to activate and I then bring the wires from the dead man switch and the accelerator thumb switch with these wires and it goes under the foot pedal 
and I have made a little holes for the wires to go through in the seat. Um, here's the Hobby King 60 amp ESC. It doesn't have its heat shrink anymore and there's no label. And this is a very cheap Chernigy's servo tester. Servo tester that I have used to control the throttle, but you know this will be replaced with the with my own controller. And this is a pretty important part. This is a Chernigy precision watt meter and power analyzer. Basically, it allows me to see what kind of uh, voltage and current is is going to the motor controller and therefore to the actual motor. And the motor that I'm currently using or is currently attached is a prop drive 5060 380 kV. It's a Chernigy NTM series motor and it's from Hobby King also. Very cheap motor, only $30. So and like it's rated for two and a half kilowatts, so that is like three horsepower there. But it is just way too current hungry. And I'm actually thinking that I'm going to put two like, I'm going to replace that, that motor there with a little bit bigger diameter one, but I am thinking of putting actually two of them in there. I already have no... Uh, I have two gears on the rim on both sides, so... Yeah, I think it's gonna be pretty fast and it actually might get in a pretty decent range, so I hope you guys I got you guys interested in what I'm doing at the moment, and I'm going to... Uh, well, well, once more parts arrive, I'm going to make another project log later and show you guys how things are developing. So, if you guys like this video, then leave a like, and if this project is interesting you, then leave a comment. If you have something you want to ask about it, and if you want to see more of these videos, then maybe subscribe. But anyways... I'll see you guys later.